In this Elden Ring video, I'm going to be talking a bit about why I think you should play Divinity Original Sin 2 if you are a huge fan of Elden Ring. At first glance, these two games seem nothing alike. They are two completely different games by completely different developers that focus completely on different aspects of the role-playing genre. However, both of these developers are the best at what they do in the business, and there is a lot of overlap in the things that they do that have made them both successful. And in this video, I want to go through these things because I think if you're an Elden Ring fan, you're absolutely doing yourself a disservice if you do not play Divinity Original Sin 2. So the first thing I want to talk about that's extremely similar between these two games is character creation. So just like in Elden Ring, Divinity Original Sin 2 has classes that you can pick from at the beginning of the game. You can customize these, but there are basic ones to choose from that sort of give you a general direction. They have a general attribute distribution, some abilities, and some starting equipment to give you a general idea of a direction to go in the game. Just like Elden Ring has the classes that it has, this has the same thing here in Divinity Original Sin 2. And just like Elden Ring, once you get out on the landscape and you start exploring and you start leveling up, you're free to do whatever you want with your character. So you have your general direction from the beginning, but then you can do absolutely whatever you want. You can mix and match attributes. You can mix and match spells and skills and abilities. You have 100% freedom to make whatever build you want to make. And just like Elden Ring, there are some builds that are better than other builds. That's definitely a thing. But you still have that freedom to go in whatever direction you want. If you want to be a fire mage that also wields a battle axe, and goes into melee combat and messes people up in melee, but then flings fireballs and fire spells from a distance at the same time, you can. Or if you want to be a healer that shoots a bow at the same time, you can. There is so much build variety in Divinity Original Sin 2 that if you love the way that build variety is in Elden Ring, you will absolutely not find another game that's as close to the freedom available to you as Divinity Original Sin 2. I have spent countless hours making builds in Divinity Original Sin 2 just the way I've done in Elden Ring because of that freedom, because it makes the way you play the game different every time and every encounter different depending on what builds you have and what characters you have in your group and how you've set them up because you can make your companions have whatever builds they want as well. So there's just so much freedom there and I think these two things alone are probably the biggest reason to play Divinity Original Sin 2 if you're an Elden Ring fan but I'll get into the other ones as well. The next thing that these two games have in common is the exploration and questing system in these games. The questing system in Divinity Original Sin 2 is more traditional in the sense that, you know, you do have quests in a quest log and you have objectives that you want to do, but there are no markers on the map telling you where to go. And if you don't pay attention and listen to what NPCs tell you and read the lore notes that you pick up along the way or investigate clues and things like that, you will not find the solution to the quest or figure out where to go and things like that. There's no go to this question mark here or 400 meters to this thing. It's kind of old school in that sense. And I think players will really appreciate that they can go wherever they want all over the map, do the quests or not do the quests, solve the quests in whatever manner they want to solve them, whether they want to kill the NPC that's involved or betray the NPC or bribe the NPC or turn against the NPC and get somebody else's help, or steal from that NPC and plan evidence on someone else. There are so many ways to solve quests in this game, and it's not so straightforward that, you know, you're just going to go to a quest marker and skip through the dialogue and you're done with the quest at all. There is a lot of complexity in the way they are designed, and I think if you're an Elden Ring fan who appreciates the quest system in that game where you kind of got to do some exploration and some digging on how to do these things that you'll really enjoy this about Divinity Original Sin 2 as well, even though they're not exactly the same. And the next thing I think these games have in common, even though it's not directly in common, is that they both have insanely good combat. Obviously, Elden Ring has real-time action-based combat that's not similar to Divinity Original Sin 2 in any sense. But Divinity Original Sin 2 has turn-based combat that is extremely strategic, meaning that you have to plan out your every move and the builds that you've created while you're not in combat in both of these games play a huge role in how things play out in combat. Your build is going to determine whether you succeed in combat or fail, and this is not more true than it is in either of these games. And because combat is so good in these games, you look forward to this aspect. It's not only the exploration of the world and the leveling up system and the questing and the build, but the actual combat itself in both of these games is so good that you can't wait to get into it see how your builds fare, and make tweaks to those builds outside of combat that creates this fantastic loop where you want to explore, you want to get new gear, you want to go test it out in combat, and then you want to keep repeating this because it's so much fun 
Both of these games have absolutely nailed this gameplay loop. And if you love that gameplay loop in Elden Ring, you should love it in Divinity Original Sin 2. Now, some people might say, yeah, well, that's all well and good. I really like the idea that your build plays a huge role in the gameplay. That's my jam, but I don't like turn-based combat. It's too slow for me. That's why I really like Elden Ring. And to those people, I would simply say, I think that Divinity Original Sin 2 and Divinity Original Sin are unique because they have a huge focus on environmental interaction. Spells and their elements combine in certain ways to create things that happen in combat that you don't see in other turn-based games. For instance, you can freeze water and make people slip on it, or you can set oil on fire and make the whole screen explode. There are just so many things you can do with the spells themselves, combining them with the environment that you're in, that it's not just the abilities that you're using and the build that you're using, although that's a huge part of combat. It's what you do with them in combat that really makes the difference as well. So there's more layers to it than I think your typical turn-based combat game would have. And it makes combat extremely dynamic and interesting in a way that most turn-based games do not capture. And the next thing I'll say about Divinity Original Sin 2 is that it has very good itemization as well. It pushes your builds forward. You feel like you're getting rewarded and you're constantly getting upgrades to your gear, tweaking things around, making your characters better in certain ways. And a lot of the gear in the game is random. So sometimes your build changes in ways that's unexpected to lean into the equipment that you get. There is some like static legendary gear not unlike Elden Ring as well, but there are also, you know, some randomness to the things that you get. But the way that it's done is absolutely fantastic, and it constantly feels like your character is evolving and changing as you progress the game, and you always feel rewarded for the combats that you do and for exploring areas of the game. They've really nailed this. You get really rewarded for exploration and combat just the way that you do in Elden Ring. So if you're a big fan of doing combat, but you want those sweet rewards afterward, that's really what's motivating you, then this game is going to reward you in spades for doing that, and you'll really, really enjoy that aspect. And probably the last point that I'll make that'll be a huge point for some people is that you can play this game in co-op and you can play this game in PvP. Not many turn-based RPGs can you do this with, or RPGs in general. Elden Ring is an exception. Not many games at the caliber and size and scope of Elden Ring can you also co-op or let alone PvP. You can do both of those things in Divinity Original Sin 2, and you can play through the game with your friends or family or whatever you do, and then you can get into PvP combat and fight against people as well. So if you like that online play and you like cooperative play or PvP play, you can also do that in this game, which I think is a huge selling point. And if you're playing on console, for instance, you can actually couch co-op this game, which is another reason I think it's like a really, really good game. Very few games have couch co-op anyway, let alone RPGs, and it's one of the very few that does. Those things being said, I think I've made a great case why you should try Divinity Original Sin 2 if you love Elden Ring. At first glance, again, if you're just looking at the gameplay, if you're watching the gameplay of this video and you're thinking, yeah, I get what you're saying, I don't see that in the gameplay, you're not going to see it in the gameplay. What I'm trying to tell you is something that is only known to people who have played this game and it is not inherently obvious from just looking at the gameplay alone. You won't see the dynamic between your character build outside of combat and the success in combat in a gameplay video. You won't see the freedom of exploration and how to solve quests and the many ways you can do that in a gameplay video. There are so many things you just will not see unless you've experienced the game for yourself, which is why I'm trying to bring that information to you. And another thing that's extremely similar that I forgot to mention earlier is there's a bit at the beginning of the game, people get stuck in the first area of the game called Fort Joy a lot in this game and they don't understand because it's very difficult early on. They don't understand the game's mechanics. They don't understand where they're supposed to go or what to do. It has a bit of a trial by fire at the beginning of the game, just like the Souls games did. And if you make it through that and come out the other side, you fall in love with this game. A lot of people get stuck at that beginning area, which is why we made numerous guides trying to help them get through the same way we did with Elden Ring, because we knew once they did, they would really love this game. And I absolutely believe in my heart that if you play Elden Ring and you love Elden Ring, you will love Divinity Original Sin 2. For those of you out there who have played both of these games, am I wrong here? Do they share a lot in common that's not inherently obvious at first glance? Would you recommend Divinity Original Sin 2 to people who love Elden Ring knowing that their gameplay is vastly different in terms of the style of combat? What do you think? Let me know in the comments below.